This is the Khmer Times News. My name is Paolo Bonini, and these are your headlines. A double murder so foul it will echo in the crime books for years to come. Yet another nightclub burns down and kills nine people. And there's a Buddha statue that is causing a firestorm of debate. But I will let you decide. First, to our headline story. Now, this story would never, ever be in any crime fiction novel for the sole reason it is so cruel and so depraved and so gruesome. No reader would ever believe it could have happened, but it did. And it is so often the case, truth is way beyond fiction. So here it is. Can you imagine a woman getting jealous of her husband, spending time with another woman? Well, yes, you can imagine that. But can you now imagine that that jealous woman gets a male accomplice to help her in seeking revenge? Well, I'm sure you can also imagine that. But can you believe that the woman told her accomplice she could rape the victim as she watched. And then, when that violent, sadistic and brutal rape was finished, the woman would step forward in the dark hut and then murder the victim's two-year-old son. She looked at the infant laying on the floor and she calmly placed her foot on the child's throat. She then pressed down on the baby's neck and slowly and callously she killed him. She stared at the child, not a flicker of emotion. The only sound in that dark hut that night was the sobs of its mother, who had just been savagely brutalized. A depraved man and woman who murdered a mother and her young child in a crime prompted by jealousy face life imprisonment. The victims were a 35-year-old mother, a farmer of very limited means and a child who was just two years old. According to the confession of the main perpetrator, she said she had become jealous of the victim after she had felt her husband spent too much time with her. She and her husband had argued over the matter. So she waited for her husband to fall asleep, and then the wife, along with an accomplice, set out to commit the murders, and so vile they were that they beggar belief. But it was not only murder, for the male accomplice had been promised that if he took part in this crime, he would be allowed to rape the female victim. The pair arrived at the victim's house at 8.30pm, and the horrors that were to then unfold are truly frightening. First, they attacked the victim, they tied her up and they gagged her. The male suspect then proceeded to brutally rape the victim, whilst his female accomplice stared on blankly, showing no emotion. After the rape, they strangled the woman to death, and it is then that their murderous eyes fell upon the infant. The woman, in the dark gloom of that evening, had witnessed a brutal rape and a murder. But what was she to do with the child? She then placed a single foot on the child's throat, and oh, so very slowly, she applied more and more pressure, until she had crushed the infant's windpipe and killed him. The two suspects then set fire to the house and left, it was not long later that the police arrived on the scene and the murderous pair were arrested, charged with the rape and murder of a mother and the unbelievably cruel and cold killing of a baby. And it was all due to the envy of a single evil woman.
There has been yet another deadly fire in a nightclub. This is very much in line with some of the appalling fires we have seen break out in casinos of late. And yet again, a sway of people lay dead. Nine foreigners and one Cambodian are believed to have died in the Phnom Penh nightclub inferno. And that death toll could still rise. But why? Does it keep happening? Why do casinos and nightclubs in particular keep bursting into flames? But more importantly, why is it that sways of people die in one of the most horrific ways imaginable, trapped in a burning building, as they discover all attempts to escape are futile? A devastating nightclub fire early this week in Phnom Penh has killed nine people, and that total could go higher. Police have said in a statement that the fire started at 5pm on the fifth floor of the 6969 nightclub. The director of fire and rescue has stated that although firefighters arrived at the scene quickly, they were unable to rescue people as they were trapped. He said that the fire has started due to faulty electrical wiring and added that toxic smoke from the fire added to the difficulty of the rescue. And right there, we have two of the three building blocks that create these tragedies. Firstly, the toxicity of the dense smoke is often the killer in these fires and quite incredibly, it is the smoke that kills people, not the fire itself, with 80% of all deaths in fires being caused by smoke inhalation. In March, the Bavette nightclub went up in flames. In February, it was the new nightclub in Schoenuckville. In January, again in Schoenuckville, the Julie and Anna nightclub combusted and left two dead. In Siem Rip, the same club has burnt down twice, the second time killing three people. So the question is, why the deaths? Well, we know that the ignition point is nearly always faulty wiring, due to the clubs overloading their electrical systems with too many lights and a too big a sound system. And we also know that the smoke itself is the actual killer. But the real reason behind people dying, and this is our third block of the three, is due to the lack of fire escapes or fire escapes being chained shut to stop people sneaking into clubs without paying. So now some are calling for a much more stringent safeguard, not only to electrical safety within these clubs, but also clearly defined fire exit, well lit and not bolted shut by overzealous club owners. Just the one story from our crime desk this week. And it's all about an art crime. But this crime is not as it may appear. There is a Buddha statue that has set the internet alight due to the depiction of Buddha being rather less than flattering. Some have even called it laughable. But it is not for I to judge, it is for you, dear viewer, to make up your own mind. For art is very much in the eye of the beholder. So first, let us get up to speed as to what a Buddha statue should look like. Now here is one here, look upon this mighty statue of Buddha. Note the calm that it exudes with its relaxed posture, and that enigmatic smile that shines down benevolently upon all that look upon it and admire it. Or how about this one? A more relaxed pose, but again one can feel the calm and the holy aura exuding from this mighty and beautiful piece of art. Then, of course, there's this. Yep, 
This is the one that is setting the web alight. Now, I am no art critic, but if we quickly just flick back to the first statue we looked at, yes, this one here, looking all mighty and lovely, then we flick to the controversial one, we see a very different level of skill that was employed in the commissioning of each. In fact, it is quite apparent there is a huge chasm in the difference in skill set employed to create each statue. And I am not alone in that thought. Now, what I speak of is the response given from some of those in authority, for they say they are to re-examine the new Buddha statue after the deluge of online criticism. And the Passat Provincial Administration comment is quite simply classic. They have said, and I quote, The construction of the statue was done by a craftsman with little knowledge and limited technique. Hmm, limited technique, they say. Really? Who would have guessed? But here's the thing. This 29 meter high Buddha may show limited technique and it may well have been crafted with little knowledge, but I like it. And I really do, for it makes me smile, and that is a good thing. And if we look to the words of Buddha himself on the subject of acceptance, what he says is truly enlightening. For Buddha has said, the moment that judgment stops through acceptance of what it is, you are free of the mind. You have made room for love, for joy, and for peace. And I, for one, feel we should accept this statue and make room for joy and for love, for it is truly unique. Now, we have seen an awful lot of crime in this week's show. But what happens afterwards? The baddies have been shackled and dragged down to some dark, damp hole to sit and to wait for their justice to be delivered. Of course, a case is to be prepared by the prosecution, and we, the law-abiding public, can rest easy, knowing that soon their judgment will come. But will it? As it turns out, judges and prosecutors are being overwhelmed by the workload. There is a huge number of cases that are awaiting trial. At current, there are over 40,000 criminal cases backlogged. And currently, there is little hope of reducing that extraordinary number, as the mountain of cases only ever increases. The Minister of Justice has said that judges and prosecutors are being overwhelmed by the number of cases they are having to handle. He has said that each judge and prosecutor has to handle up to 300 cases each year, which is way too many. Noting that resolutions are taking far too long and more judges and prosecutors are desperately needed. He also said that the number of court cases keeps increasing each and every year. Last year, a total of 152,000 cases were registered. And of those, 70% of the total cases was resolved. Now that leaves nearly a third unresolved. The PM himself has aired his views that the huge backlog in court cases needs to be addressed with a matter of urgency. So what is the answer to this looming problem? Well, the Minister of Justice himself wants cases to be settled out of court. He said, According to Cambodian law, dispute resolution through mediation is permitted, both within and outside the judiciary system. 
According to Cambodian civil procedures, the judges can mediate between the parties to end disputes in civil cases, and this can take place at any stage of a court proceedings. Now let's have a very quick review of what's just been said there. It's said that basically through a court proceedings, even midway through, you may settle financially to cease the case. So it stops right there and then if the case is not going your way. And this is all very well, but some commentators have said that this could lead to the scales of justice being unbalanced somewhat. Because if halfway through a case and it's not going your way, if you have a healthy bankroll, you can step into chambers and you can pay your way out of the case. Of course, this does not apply to capital crimes such as murder. But does it now mean that those who have the cash can dash, whilst those who are poor are shown the prison door. It's time to have a look ahead and see what the weather has in store for us next week. Did you know that if you were to take the average for the amount of rain across the entire Earth, it would be one metre in any given spot. But of course, that's not the way it works. It rains hardly at all in some places and a crap load in others. And here in Cambodia, we're going to get an awful lot of it. Look at it the weekend. We're going to get thunder and lightning as well. The temperatures in the high 20s and the humidity will pitch and it will fall, depending as to when that rain comes. This has been the Khmer Times News. Please do subscribe and comment and stay up to date with all the breaking news by following us on both Facebook and Telegram. This has been Paolo Bonini and that was the week that was. I'll see you next weekend for your weekly roundup.